Hello there, General Techno here with yet another video review, the first in quite some time, and as you can see with a completely different camera rig and setup. Today I'm going to be taking a look at a very recent figure that's only just now starting to show up in stores in uh, the US, and just showed up a few weeks ago at stores online, and that would be Generations Warpath. Now, just to do a bit of quick history with this figure, Warpath was a G1 character, as all of you probably know, and he turned into the, a uh, red tank, like this one here. However, there was also a Warpath uh, figure that came out back in 2009 that was in the Legends class, and unfortunately it was also a very hard to find figure, especially for those of us in Canada, many of whom didn't actually see the toy. And some of us stupidly passed on the Henke one at TFCon, and then the only way we were able to get our hands on the mold was the Gut Cruncher repaint in the Revenge of the Fallen toy line, which I bought an entire five-pack of Legends just to get this one figure. Yeah, it was kind of worth it, but still. So now, flash forward to 2011, when Hasbro decided to finally update Warpath and give us a brand new design in the Deluxe mold. Now Warpath turns into what's commonly called nowadays an H-Tank. That is, the treads form a bit of an H shape here. As far as H tanks go, he's actually one of the better ones out there in my opinion. Just to compare him, here he is next to his Legends counterpart, which you can see has far more of an H. It's basically a very similar alt mode, except it has quite a few improvements. The barrel still moves up and down, like on the uh, original one here, but the turret also does a complete 360 degrees which on tank figures actually can be, you can either have that or not, depending on the character, really. Sometimes they only move this much, sometimes they're full 360. But to have that and a tank turret that moves up and down is actually pretty impressive. He's also got a couple of weapons up here, as you can see, and there is a missile launcher right there, which I'm just going to load up here. And this is actually the only real nagging thing I don't like about the figure, which is the fact that, because of the safety reasons and stuff, it uses one of those launcher missiles that sticks all the way up the back. Now, I understand you can clip this to no ill effect, but even still, I generally just don't use it. I just leave it outside, and that's why I didn't have it in there originally. Now, just to do a quick uh, size comparison in this mode, I'm just going to put him next to another recent tank former, 2009's Revenge of the Fall... sorry, 2010's... Revenge of the Fallen Bludgeon figure. So as this one was a Voyager and this one's a Deluxe, so as you can see they're still both pretty good tanks. And I would compare it to Strax's or Skullgren except I have neither one of those in vehicle mode handy at the time. Now then, let's move on to transformation, shall we? As far as Deluxes go, Warpath has a fairly simple transformation. Not quite as uh, simple as the classic Seeker mold, but not nearly as complex as some of the others, like Trax, for instance, in the recent series. He's pretty straightforward. You just pull the legs out, then you pull the arms out, you assemble the body, and as a final step in the Automorph, what you do is you press in the turret in order to reveal his head. And as you can see, looking at his head sculpt here, it is a fairly decent likeness of Warpath. It even has, like on the original toy, a piece right up behind the head here, just increasing the general accuracy. And the barrel compresses, like the original toy. Unlike the original toys, but like the animation model on the original figure. In robot mode, Warpath is a fairly impressive toy as far as posability goes. He's really not uh, that different from the average Transformer, however. He's got standard knees, he's got ball-jointed hips right here. His feet have a little bit of give, not too much because of the transformation. And he's got swivel elbows in both directions, as well as a swivel here and a swivel here. He also has the tank turret, which you can extend and move up and down, but then the head will push back down really easily. The turret also keeps the head up. And his head also allows for full 360 degree rotation in either direction. Just looking at him from the side and from the back, Warpath is a relatively kibble-free toy. He's very straightforward in that sense, and that's really one of the nice things about him. 
which is that he just looks like an average soldier with a small barrel protruding here. It doesn't really give away what he turns into, aside from the tank treads right here. And he's a really straightforward figure in that sense. For a quick size comparison of Warpath with recent figures, here he is next to the United Jazz Mold, which is a very good mold. Not around the same level of complexity, I'd say, but again, fairly standard. And here he is next to a mold that, if you have been in the fandom since 2006, at this point you must own at least one of, which is the classic Seeker mold as seen here in Thundercracker. As you can see, he's a fairly run-of-the-mill height for a deluxe figure, and there's really nothing all that unusual about him height-wise. He fits right in with the other figures. He's not short like some, and he's not too large like others. And just to give another example of the missile before I go, this is where the missile really fails, in that it sticks out this far, which means that you can't pose him right against a wall. You've got this big missile sticking out. So if you want to do otherwise, you need to fire off this missile, and then put him a bit further back on your shelf. For people like me, that's very handy. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this quick look at Generations Warpath. This is General Techno signing off.